That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid. Boy, we've got a good one for you today because there are several people involved in the Daily Dose of Stupid because the Daily Dose of Stupid is not one person. It is a conference. So here's what happened. The Gun Sense Forum happened over this weekend. And at this Gun Sense Forum, which was hosted by Every Town for Gun Safety, you had virtually every Democrat that is running for president, which at this point I think is 170. You had every Democrat that's running for, for the president right now showing up at this thing, giving their two cents, talking about specifically gun control. And they can call it gun safety if they want, but it's gun control. If you're taking people's guns, it's gun control. Now, I consider gun control using both hands when I shoot my pistol, but you know what they're talking about. Next is a clip from Andrew Yang showing some of his ignorance on guns as well. And, and to sort of set the stage here, he was just asked a question by a lady about uh, having a gun in the house and, and one of the, the children in this story actually dies from that. So it is a very tragic premise and, and his response is totally understandable, but we're going to go through it here. This is Andrew Yang. Any second. I have a six and three-year-old boy. That's imagining. <laughs> I was imagining it was one of them that got shot and the other saw it. <laughs> that scene that she described, I'm sorry, it's like very, very affecting. You're right that when there's a gun in the household, you're more likely to have a child get shot or the owner get shot than to kill, let's say, an intruder into the house. Those are just numbers. Um, those are just the facts. All right, so there's Andrew Yang and... I'll say this just on the onset. I think that that reaction was probably real. Because, I mean, hearing a story like that the, of a kid dying, it, whether it's a gun or, or anything, I mean, whether it's cancer or whatever else, that is something that affects you emotionally. And so there were some people that were going after Yang and saying, well, he was just fake crying on stage. I don't believe that. I don't. I think that that was probably a genuine reaction. I don't think that he was playing it up. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm naive. I don't know. But I'm totally giving him the benefit of the doubt on that because that is a sad story. But just because the story is sad and just because I think he was genuinely moved, that his emotions were genuinely stirred and spurred on by that, that doesn't mean that what he's saying is actually correct. In fact, I have quite a few numbers and statistics here. Let's go ahead and look at, at this first one, which uh, the source here is the CDC and the J Journal of Criminal Law. So this is every year in the U.S. 31,000 homicides, suicides, or accidental shootings happen in the U.S., which result in 15,000 fatalities. So 31,000 of those, and then 15,000 of those are deaths. Between 800,000 and 2.5 million defensive uses of firearms in a single year. So you compare those two. 31,000 homicides, suicides or accidental shootings, and then 15,000 deaths. So even if you're using the total number, you're not even just counting deaths. You're counting injuries from accidental discharges or intentional discharges of firearms. And you compare that to the number of times that they are being used defensively, even if you lowball it as much as humanly possible and use the lowest figure that the CDC gave, which is 800,000, it's still 25 times higher. Guns are used at the bare minimum 25 times higher for defensive purposes than they are to hurt another person, even accidentally. And if you use the highest figure that they gave, the highest possible figure, which is 2.5 million, it's 80 times higher. And so when Andrew Yang says, well, those are just the numbers, those are just the facts. Um, sorry, no, they're not. And for a guy that is supposedly a math guy, somebody that's supposedly really intelligent, by the way, I think Yang is intelligent. In fact, I, I'll be honest, I never expected to have to do a daily dose of stupid for him. But he is just dead wrong on this. Being smart doesn't mean that you get to make up your own facts. All right, let's look at this. Annually in the USA, 
between 80,000 and 200,000 defensive uses of firearms are women defending themselves from sexual assault. So this is only counting women specifically that are defending themselves from sexual assault, 80,000 to 200,000. Again, the numbers aren't even close. Andrew Yang is not just wrong, he's completely wrong. Not even close to the right answer. All right, let's check this out. Look at some other numbers. Again, annually in the U.S., law enforcement, and that's from all different branches, from your local police officer and sheriff's office all the way up to the FBI. Law enforcement kills 606 criminals every single year. Private citizens with a firearm kill 1,527 criminals a year. So a little less than four times what police officers do. Now, you can chalk part of that up to police officers having other options. They also have tasers. They also have dogs. But that's not the only thing going on here. That wouldn't account for a, a difference that big. And so, yes, firearms are used correctly for defensive purposes all the time. Whether it's by women defending themselves from sexual assault, defending their kids, the simple fact is, if you look at the numbers it overwhelmingly points to defensive use of firearms being a very common thing. Let's look at this one. The United Kingdom versus the USA. The USA has a violent crime rate of 466 per 100,000 citizens. Now, the rate in the UK, they have a violent crime rate of 2,034 per 100,000 citizens, so four times larger than the USA. In this same source, the European Commission report specifically said in there that the UK has some of the strictest gun control laws in the Western Hemisphere. So, I mean, you're excluding Russia, but pretty much every other nation over there in the, the Eurasia, the, those two continents, UK has the strictest by far. And you have to think about that too. They live on a freaking island. If there was anywhere where gun control ought to work, it would be UK. They have a relatively small population, and they have an island. So it would be really hard to smuggle guns in from the outside. And yet, this isn't just gun crime. This is looking at violent crime overall. They're saying, well, guns are, are making crimes easier to commit. Guns are causing all these crimes. No, the violent crime rate in the UK is four times larger than the U.S., and the UK is essentially a giant gun-free zone, and yet they have way more crime. It's almost like knowing that you might get shot deters criminals. All right, let's look at this next one. We've been talking about violent crime, but this one specifically addresses mass shootings. Annually in the US, the average death rate when police officers stop a mass shooting is 14.3. So on average, and this is counting when, when hardly anyone dies and when a lot of people die, when you're talking about mass shootings where a police officer is the one that stopped it, 14.3. The average death when an armed citizen stops a mass shooting, 2.3. That is six times lower than when a police officer does it. Now, goodness knows, if you've watched this program for any amount of time, you know I love our police officers. And I, I even contemplated at one point doing what they do when I said it, it's too tough for me, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I have an amazing amount of respect for our police officers. But they can't be everywhere at once. And they can't just magically appear places. And in mass shooting situations, where there is an armed person there, because the response time is so much faster, we have less deaths. And that is something to be applauded. Because as, as much as I revere our police officers, they're not omnipresent. They're not superheroes. I mean, it's not like Superman where he hears something across town and he zips over there because he's faster than the speed of light. And so we are safer with guns than without them. And Andrew Yang can say, well, that's just facts. That's just numbers. Well, no, the numbers actually don't agree with you at all. When you look at the numbers, you are at far more risk without a gun than you are with a gun. Whether you're trying to defend yourself from burglars or sexual assault or mass shootings, in every single case, if you're looking at the numbers, a person with a gun is safer. 
And there are horrible incidents like the one that was being talked about here. And sometimes those incidents happen from a lack of understanding about gun safety, which, by the way, if that was the problem, you know who you need to turn to for that? The NRA. They teach gun safety programs, and they're very good. I know some of the instructors. When Democrats are doing this, they're doing so blindly. And Andrew Yang, who is specifically someone who I thought I would never have to say this about, who I would never have to do a daily dose of stupid on, he just pulled an AOC, where he just kind of pulled something out of his butt and hoped that it panned out. Just kind of threw something out there and, well, I hope the numbers back me up because I'm going to say that they do. Sorry, they don't. There are a lot of issues, a lot of issues out there where even though I have a very strong stance one way or the other, I can kind of see both sides. I can kind of see where they're coming from. There's some facts that kind of line up with their side of it. Not with guns. Not with guns at all. Every single statistic, every single one, points to guns making us safer. And when you're talking about government restrictions on them, you can't say that the, the statistics always point to us being safer without gun restrictions, but you can look at the statistics where they have gun restrictions and do a comparison and show that they're at, le- at the very least no safer. So at the, the absolute best case scenario, you wind up with exactly the same amount of gun violence, exactly the same amount of crime, but less liberty. That's the absolute best you can hope for if you're looking at the stats. And I'm not willing to accept that. You shouldn't ever sacrifice liberty for security, but you certainly shouldn't when you can actually look at the numbers and it shows that you're going to get less security or at the very least equal security and you are guaranteed less liberty because that's what you're sacrificing. It makes no sense to go along with these policies. And Andrew Yang, I'm sorry, I know you're a really smart guy and even though I don't agree with most of your policies... I do think that you usually come at them from an angle of academic honesty and you want to have that discussion and want to hear good ideas. This one you just pulled crap out of your butt and got caught. Sorry, buddy. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you gotta subscribe to find out what's on it.